Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of Queen's University in Belfast has shown a clear link between a specific longevity marker and how flavonoid rich foods can positively affect that one particular marker. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of Queen's University in Belfast has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read that was penned by the American Heart Association but was conducted at the Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And the study shows some very clear links between flavonoid rich food and a reduction in blood pressure. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Flavonoid rich foods, including berries, apples, pears and wine, appear to have a positive effect on blood pressure levels, an association that is partially explained by characteristics of the gut microbiome. This is according to new research published in the American Heart Association's journal, Hypertension. Aideen Cassidy, PhD, lead investigator and professor of nutrition and preventative medicine at the Institute for Global Food Security at Queen's University in Belfast said, our gut microbiome plays a key role in metabolizing flavonoids to enhance their cardioprotective effects. And this study provides evidence to suggest these blood pressure lowering effects are achievable with simple changes to the daily diet. Flavonoids are compounds found naturally in fruits, vegetables and plant-based foods such as tea, chocolate and thankfully red wine. In previous research, they have been shown to offer a variety of health benefits to the body. Flavonoids are broken down by the body's gut microbiome. That is the bacteria that is found in our digestive tract. Recent studies found a link between the microorganisms in the human digestive tract and cardiovascular disease or CVD, which is the leading cause of death worldwide. The amount and type of gut bacteria is highly variable between individuals and there are reported differences in the gut microbial compositions among people with and without CVD. With increased research suggesting that flavonoids may reduce heart disease risk, this study assessed the role of the gut microbiome on that process. Researchers examined the association between eating flavonoid rich food with blood pressure and with the gut microbiome diversity. The study also investigated how much variance within the gut microbiome could explain the association between intake of flavonoid rich food and changes to someone's blood pressure. Hypertension or high blood pressure tends to get worse as we age with about 75% of those people aged 75 and older having this condition. According to a 2005 study, people who have normal blood pressure at the age of 50 live around five years longer than 50 year olds who have hypertension. The study found that people with a high blood pressure are more likely to have cardiovascular disease and suffer heart attacks and strokes than those who have normal blood pressure. Men with normal blood pressure could expect to live 5.1 years longer than someone who has hypertension. And the study also found that women could plan on living another 4.9 years if they don't suffer from hypertension. The cohort consisted of 904 adults from Germany's PopGen Biobank, and they were aged between 25 and 82. 57% of the cohort were men. The PopGen Biobank includes participants from a network of seven separate biobanks in northern Germany. Researchers evaluated the participants' food intake, their gut microbiome, their blood pressure levels, together with other clinical and molecular phenotyping at regular follow up examinations. Participants' intake of flavonoid-rich foods during the previous year was calculated from a self-reported food questionnaire covering 112 different types of food, detailing the frequency and the quantity of food that was consumed. Flavonoid values were assigned to foods in accordance with 
the United States Department of Agriculture data on flavonoid content in food. The gut microbiome for participants was assessed through fecal bacterial DNA. This was extracted from stool samples. After an overnight fast, participants' blood pressure levels were measured three times at three minute intervals after an initial five minute rest period. Researchers also collected participants' lifestyle information. This included BMI, their sex and their age, their smoking status, their use of medications, physical activity, a family history of coronary artery disease, and the daily calories and fiber content that was consumed. So the analysis of regular flavonoid intake with gut microbiome and blood pressure levels revealed the following. Study participants who had the highest intake of flavonoid rich foods, which included berries, red wine, apples and pears, had a lower systolic blood pressure level, as well as a greater diversity in their gut microbiome than the participants who consumed the lowest levels of flavonoid rich foods. Up to 15.2% of this association between flavonoid rich foods and systolic blood pressure could be explained by the diversity found in the participants' gut microbiome. Let's take a look at eating berries and drinking wine. Eating 1.6 servings of berries per day, one serving equals around 80 grams or one cup, was associated with an average reduction in systolic blood pressure levels of 4.1 millimeters of mercury and about 12% of that association was explained by gut microbiome factors. Drinking 2.8 glasses of red wine per week, that's around 125 milliliters of wine per glass, was associated with an average lowering of 3.7 millimeters of mercury for systolic blood pressure levels, of which 15% could be explained by the gut microbiome. Dr. Cassidy stated, our findings indicate future trials should look at participants according to metabolic profile in order to more accurately study the roles of metabolism and gut microbiome in regulating the effects of flavonoids on blood pressure. A better understanding of the highly individual variability of flavonoid metabolism could very well explain why some people have greater cardiovascular protection benefits from flavonoid rich foods than others. Whilst this study does suggest potential benefits to consuming red wine, the American Heart Association suggests that if you don't drink alcohol already, you shouldn't really start. If you do drink, talk with your doctor about the benefits and the risks of consuming alcohol in moderation. According to a statement on dietary health by the American Heart Association, alcohol intake can be a component of a healthy diet if consumed in moderation. Current guidelines equate to no more than one alcoholic drink per day for women and no more than two alcoholic drinks a day for men. The authors noted that participants for the study were from the general population and the participants were unaware of the hypothesis. However, residual or unmeasured confounding factors such as other health conditions or genetics can lead to bias. Thus, these findings cannot prove a direct cause and effect. That said, the researchers did conduct a detailed adjustment in their analysis for a wide range of diet and lifestyle factors. The authors also noted the focus of the study was on specific foods that are known to be rich in flavonoids and not all foods and beverages that contain some levels of flavonoids. Now, although it's always better to get as many nutrients as possible from food, there are supplements that also contain flavonoids. The most common are listed here. Please feel free to pause the video and read the list of the supplements at your leisure. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, in my humble opinion, nothing really new here. We all know that eating berries, drinking green tea, have health benefits, as does uh, red wine in moderation. That said, blood pressure, like diabetes, 
is a marker that does affect both lifespan and health span. So adding flavonoids to your diet if you can, whether it be berries or green tea, uh, or if you can't do that, then adding quercetin and fisetin as a supplement really is uh, a no-brainer.